Radiant Team Bang. Good morning everyone, and afternoon for you Europeans, and welcome back to another TT Esports Weekly Dota 2 competition. This is going to be number 11. Powered by Adroids, and of course brought to you today by your host, me, Kunaz. Uh, we're going to get right underway here, already in-game in the first match of the day that we're going to be covering here. And I believe it's going to be in the round of eight for this week's match. A little bit lower in terms of the number of games I'm going to be broadcasting for you. But it's going to be between uh, Infernity RS and uh, Crave Gaming. It looks like Infernity going to have first pick. On the rain sign, that leaves Crave to the dire with second pick. Ten seconds. And of course, like I said, the band's already underway here, so we're going to get going very quickly. With the Nyx, going to be the first band from Inferni Crave, following it up with a Wisp band. And uh, actually, there's going to be a Skywrath mage getting banned out by Inferni here for the second one. So I haven't gotten to uh, cast a game with Skywrath yet, which is very, very sad for me. And I'm not going to get it, at least in this particular game, as he is going to be banned out here. And a Batrider to round those first bands out in this first band phase. So, um, Skywrath, not a hero I was really expecting to see. Maybe they're sitting there, thinking about it. Like, yeah, that's a hero we really aren't comfortable playing with right now. He's very powerful in the mid lane, in the right hands, and... We're just like, eh, we'll take them out. Ten won't mess with them. We have other heroes that we can play, and we're not afraid to play against some of the heroes that are more commonly banned. Of course, uh, Magnus did get left in the pool. And that means Infernity is just going to take the Magnus. So we'll see how Crave want to respond to that. If they want the Keeper Light, if they want Life Stealer, they're going to actually go Life Stealer and Lone Druid for their first two picks. So very aggressive, uh, powerful heroes here, both very late game -y sort of carries as well. Life Stealer, of course, uh, comes in line pretty early. You could definitely build him for a more mid-game role. But Lone Druid, you, when you have him on your team, you're usually building him for the long game. Planning on uh, pushing through towers, dealing damage to buildings as well as heroes. But uh, he doesn't come online very quickly. He needs some items to really get going. And he relies on his bear for a lot of damage. So it definitely can be focused down that way. Remaining. Also kind of resilient to Magnus, though. Usually you're not going to get the stun on both the Lone Druid Hero and the Bear. They're typically not very close together in team fights. Uh, at least not till later on in the game when the Lone Druid Hero is also starting to do a lot of damage. Has enough items on the Bear that will start grabbing some for his Hero. Uh, but we're going to see a Bane pick up here coming out from Inferni now. It's sort of a direct counter pick to the Light Steel that we see Crave going with to start the thing start things off here. Bane, of course, is a support that we like to pick up just because of his ultimate and the Fiend's Grip ability to go through that Rage or other BKB type effect. And of course, Enfeeble pretty good against both of these heroes, Lifesteal and Lone Druid. Enfeeble taking away that damage. If you take base damage off the bear, it does make him do significantly less damage to those towers. He usually does rely kind of on his base damage heavily early on in the game. A lot of uh Lone well, Druid players tend to build more attack speed items than straight damage items on the bear. Trying to get more attacks in to try and take advantage of the chance to proc the entangling roots on a attack effect. So they usually go that route and in Mix and Feeble pretty good. We'll see if Bane puts a lot of points in that or just kind of sticks to one. A lot of players do just stick to the one point in Feeble. Aren't really willing to commit any more points uh, to it. It does cost more mana, but it does go up. Scales perfectly evenly. And their third pick actually going to be Treant Protector. Not sure exactly what they want to do with that hero. Um, most teams don't really favor him, and I gotta feel like if they wanted to go the Treant pick, they probably didn't need to do it in the first pick phase. Maybe they're pre feeling pretty confident, completely comfortable with this pickup, and uh, willing to just take him right now go with it, show exactly what they're doing with that train. I guess it doesn't necessarily show what they're doing with the train. I tend to think that he's going to be wanting to play in that sort of tri lane as a uh, sort of support hero, but we could see him in different roles. They have buffed his damage recently, and uh, I believe we saw Empire maybe a few weeks ago try and run him in more of a carry role 
in that Trilane Swords of the Farmer. It's a sort of semi-carry that was farming, got a bunch of support items up like the mech. It was very, very difficult to kill. But we're going to sit here now and continue to wait and see what the rest of these picks are going to kind of show off now with Shadow Demon, the final pick for the first picking phase. On Crave Gaming, we've hit the second bands now. we got Shakiro and Keeper Light coming out thus far. Not really sure with that Keeper Light band from Crave if they're maybe expecting Trina Protector not to be running in a support role. Uh, with Bane and Trina already picked up, but they're both going to be played as a support in the tri lane. You wouldn't really expect Keeper Light to be the one that rounds it out. But it is at least what they're going to go with to start things off here. So maybe have a little bit more of an idea of where Infernity want to run it than I do. For any other hand, just going straight for supports that pair up with the Shadow David, taking up the Lena now. Just the heroes that have skills that are kind of difficult to land, like the Ice Path from the Jakira, like the Light Striker off of Lena, where you can use Disruption from Shadow Demon to really pair up well with those. Crave going to take out the other Tree Man now in the form of Nature's Prophet. So, continuing to uh, just kind of ban out all over the place, really. Not a hero that fills a similar role in the game as, as the Keeper of Light. They both kind of enable split pushing in their own way, Nature's Prophet mostly doing it on his own. Keeper of Light kind of making whoever your carry ends up being much, much better at split pushing. Just kind of why I'm surprised they banned him out. Uh, even if they were going to run Tree as sort of a semi carry role, they don't really have a hero that split pushes well at the moment. Five and Tree remaining. never really going to become that route, so Keeper of Light. His ultimate recallability not being that great. And uh, Lesha could be the last ban for Inferno now, so just going straight with those supports that pair up with the Shadow Demon particularly well. We'll see what Crave went with their last ban. If they're going to take out another offlaner, like maybe the Clockwork? I don't think Clockwork would go particularly well this game, especially if he runs into the Lone Druid. Uh, maybe they could run something like a Queen of Pain. I'm not really sure what they're going to want to do. Still thinking about what their last ban here is, though. Ten seconds remaining. And going to start dipping into their reserve time Five if they don't get Five going here on this last ban. And then we'll get to think about the second reserve. pick phase. Really still kind of thrown off by a tree and protector pick. Makes me think that Ferdy, you're just kind of going for heroes that they're not expecting banned out. Weaver going to actually be the ban from Crave Gaming. Certainly a possible choice for the offlane for Infernity. Maybe something they were thinking about, don't know. But it's going to be banned out so they won't get the option to run him if that was their intention. But we're going to see the second picks now. Let's see what Infernity want to go with and maybe they'll give us a little bit of a clue about how they want to run the tree. They're going to go with Phantom Assassin. Not a hero I expected to see as well. And again, kind of surprised to see them pick it up now. Crave already running two carries. Definitely weren't going to be picking PA with the Lifesteal and Druid. And they're actually going to go with Warlock, who seems like we will see in the mid lane in this particular game. And probably expect to see a second support now from uh, Crave as their last pick. But Inferni... I guess we'll see what they want to pick up if they're going to go with an offlaner. Maybe we'll see Tree in, in that r capacity, just kind of running to a side lane by himself. Or possibly even in the mid, and then we can see Mangus in the off. They do have options. Ten Tree is seconds, kind of survivable. In those off lanes, you can hide. That's really your uh, best bet. Remaining. He's kind of tanky if you get to those points in the... Uh, actually, don't even remember what this is. Living Armor. That's the one gives them survivability as well as the constant healing. And they're going to go with Enchantress. Interesting. So probably going to see her in the jungle, which does lead me to believe Tree is going to be in some sort of solo capacity rather than Bane. I think you would want the Bane laning with that Phantom Assassin to give at least some sort of ranged support. Having like the double melee dual lane with a jungling support, probably not going to be particularly good at keeping, even if they run against like Lone Druid, probably won't be able to keep him out particularly well. But we'll see what happens with that. And they're Crave looking for their final pick. Again, still expecting it to be some sort of support. Five Warlock support, remaining. not something we see a ton in the more professional games. Maybe these teams will like to run it. The, his heal is very powerful in lane. 
at uh, keeping your carry alive and sort of taking away how much he needs to rely on regen early. It's obviously kind of difficult for the Warlock to keep up, especially without levels. But it can certainly work that way. Most teams sort of just like pick a Warlock because the Golem is so powerful right now. You just want to be able to get that ult up as quickly as possible, get the Aghanim Scepter. We're going to see a Rubik pick. Uh, probably going to be support Rubik with Warlock in the mid lane, I would think. They could swap those roles though. Not expecting them to. And we'll wait for these players to pick up their heroes, and then we can get in the game. Hopefully very, very shortly. There we go. All right, beautiful. Let's Prepare go over the players and their heroes very quickly here. Dire side, Crave Gaming. We're gonna have Sipso playing the Lone Druid. We're gonna have Baron playing the Life Stealer. Cataclaw gonna be in the Shadow Demon Clinch on the Rubik, and finally, that's gonna be 10K. And that mid lane on the Warlock, it doesn't look like they're running their try lane aggressively at the moment. So probably hoping to contest that Phantom Assassin. It shouldn't be particularly difficult then for them with the Enchantress pickup that's gonna be in the jungle. I think this is probably the right call from Crave, and Lifestealer definitely a hero who can thrive in those tri lane environment friends of tri lane environments as a carry. And we're gonna see them actually go in on Grazine here from Inspire. Slip gonna come off on Baron, trying to keep him out of the fight for as long as possible. Looks like Grazine is fine, trying to run away. Has Dagger at level 1. But looks like he's gonna be able to get away just fine. Takes a lot of damage though. Spent some regen. And now the two ranged supports yeah. going in on Cataclaw, doing some good damage. Dagger's gonna be there as well on Cataclaw. Can they get the kill? Looks like First Blood will be going the way of Inspire. That's gonna go the way of Enchantress. Cataclaw, it's, uh, or uh, M, in trouble as well. Gonna sleep himself the Bane to stay alive for now. The Night Stealer does in the end get the last hit. Clinch taking the Nightmare away. It looks like he will be losing his life as well, though. For that revenge kill. So, a lot of action going down in this rainforest to start the game off. But that is going to be two kills, as well as one of them being the first blood going away of Inspire. We'll go over the players now that we have a second with that action calm down. Fanny going to be playing the uh, Magnus in the mid lane. Looks like Vic going to be on the Enchantress in that Radiant Jungle. Grazine taking up the farming Phantom Assassin who managed to not lose their life. M on the Bane Elemental, and finally going to be Rio playing the Treant up in that top lane. So it is going to be off lane Treant. I've wondered a couple times how well this is really going to work. You can kind of rely on nature's guys to try and get away, stick to the trees, try and run. That double damage rune on Treant Protector is pretty big game early on. <laughs> he does have 86 base damage at level 1. That's with plus 1 strength from that iron branch. He makes him hit very hard. 160 damage. Lone Druid can't even outlast at that. At least not for now, but the Double damage is going to wear off now, and she has to be somewhat careful. Not going to be really in danger of dying anytime soon. At least not until the Lone Druid gets some levels up. Gets level 5, grabs that point, where he gets the Entangling Claws. In the meantime, it looks like farming is kind of going the way of lifesteal and the bomb lane, at least for the moment. Not really surprising. They put up a ward here. In the range, juggle trying to block the camp. Not actually sure if this ward's close enough. Kinda gotta assume it is, but who knows? I'm terrible about putting wards to block camps. So I'll find out, I guess momentarily if this one catches. In the meantime, disruption going to catch out Bane. They're gonna fly through a cataclaw, the lift is there, but with that living armor from the top lane, M gonna be just fine. It looks like Cataclaw is gonna be the one who loses his life. Clinch in some trouble as well, getting body blocked up by M gonna go down. And now Lifestealer. Going to wand up, trying to survive for the moment. Grazine low on mana. There's gonna be enchant from Enchantress. Don't think that's gonna be enough of a slow. The dagger's there as well though from Grazine. Can they get the kill? It doesn't seem likely. There's gonna be the sleep. Seems kind of aggressive. The living armor gonna be at Grazine though. Might be enough. 
And it will. Bane gets the kill. Five to one now the kill score in favor of Infernity. Meantime, Fanny, he's got his bottle up in that mid lane, heads to the bottom river. Manages to fight an illusion route out. I'm gonna fill that bottle back up with that. Should be having a pretty good time, actually going about even at the moment with 10k in that mid lane on the Warlock. Kind of surprised to see that. I feel like this should favor Magnus a little bit, but maybe getting harassed a little more than he would like, probably, <laughs> by that Fatal Bonds. Throwing out the Shockwaves, though 10k taking a lot of damage from that. He has his bottle up as well. Looks like one of the supports, at least Clinch, going to be up for that top lane pulling now. They've kind of abandoned this offensive tri lane. And yep, in fact, have Lone Druid is down here now. So they're going to try to cut their losses. They know they went 5-1 and one in that lane to start things off. And that's not really how you want to start the game. Leaves them kind of in an awkward position of trying to figure out what can they really do to uh, try and get something back here. And I guess they're going to just try and send Lone Druid there. Hope he can farm safely and they can try and get some levels on these supports before they move around anymore. Try to contest any more farm. Baron up in this top lane farming on Light Steel. He's still doing pretty okay on farm, but he has already died. And uh, Grazine just kind of left alone in the bottom lane now. Up against Lord Druid, not the best matchup. Obviously, Lord Druid can last hit pretty well with the bear as well as the hero. But Phantom Assassin has some support around in the region. And it looks like this fort does in fact block the camp. Haste. So definitely doing okay. And it looks like there's the ping on it as well from the enchanters. Like, yeah, it's probably right there. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. So gonna have to counter ward that or just wait it out. It looks like they're just gonna go with the regular pull. As this camp is blocked as well. this easy, easy pull. It looks like they're going to use it to push down in this bottom lane. Now, into Lord Druid, he is pretty decent at defending against these pushes when he's off laning. Can't just sort of pull the creep wave behind the tower with his bear very safely. And it looks like he's actually hanging out in the rain jungle with his bear right now. I'm not sure what he's going to do with it. Looks like a disruption in the top lane on Rio. Not going to really lead to anything. It's And not really going to be able to do too much with that push. It kind of just gives a creep wave to Simso, I think. I'm not sure if they really should have went for that pull. But they did nonetheless. It's pretty hard for them to push right now when Lone Druid just kind of sitting down here. It gives more experience to Lone Druid, more farm tip as well. He gets the last turn of the tower, which he seems to be doing a decent job of. Maybe spooking too soon. As soon as I start looking at him, he gets self-conscious. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Yeah, it looks like Mike's gonna just find a rune up in the top river. Bottles that invisibility. The sports hanging out in the rain jungle. Looks like a smoke is up on en Enchantress. I don't know where they're gonna want to go for it. Kind of expect it to be mid lane, but if they walk here now, they're gonna get spot out by the sentry. Does look like they're trying to go around on 10k. Can they get to sleep there? He's gonna heal himself up to start. And immediately just everyone gonna back off because there are two ports coming in. Clinch and Cataclaw on their way. So nothing really gotta come of it. Of course there was that sentry ward up there. And they're gonna drop another one. So Pink's coming out, Cataclaw kills the ward that was placed up there. And Infernity just going to be forced to back off that smoke gank. Just kind of wasting time for the two supports. And it looks like...
looks like they might be setting up a gink on Magnus as well. No, nope. support's just rotating towards the top lane. Thought maybe they would hang around and try and get something. It looks like Fanny just going to think about going. The skewer going to be there pulling 10k back. Doesn't look like they want to use the reverse player. The Golem going to be dropped. 10k still alive. Come doing a lot of damage to Grazine. Grazine needs to get out of here. Uh, the Fam Assassin and the body blocking coming out from Vic just enough. Grazine's still alive. And. Gold will eventually go down. It looks like Vic got the last hit on the Enchantress. So it gives him a little bit of extra gold. Kind of surprised to see Phantom Assassin rotate for that kill. Let's have a Vlad's actually picked up. This is pretty aggressive. Picking up the Vlad's very early. Maybe we would have thought someone like Tree and Protector ends up picking up the Vlad's sort of as soon as he kind of gets to it. It's not the biggest deal to get Vlad's super fast, but... Whatever, this is the build they like to go. They do have a sizable lead at the moment, 6 to 1 in terms of kill. And we can look at experience, about 1500 gold, sitting just under 2500. And that's all in favor of Infernity on that right inside. Am hanging out a little bit in the bottom lane at the moment. Trying to get some farm. Doing whatever he can on this bane just to be just involved with the game. Denied. Make sure all their lanes are utilized while they're pushing in the mid lane. Grazine just using the. Phantom Strike to get the attack speed on the creep wave. Come on, sprites! And it looks like they do want to get this tower. Going in on clinch, telekinesis is gonna be there because he's gonna be forced back for a moment. I don't know if they get this kill. There we go. Back it off now. Enough teleports come out. Looks like they're gonna go for the sentry. The reverse player to be there lands on three. Grazine going in, can they get the kill? 10k is down, double kill for Fanny. And Clinch the last one left alive with the urn on him. Grazine gonna just walk up and get the last hit. Ooh, and in the meantime, who got the tower? Looks like Shadow Demon actually got the deny on the tower. Nice, nice Shadow Demon. So managed to at least get that, but they did lose three heroes. So probably not exactly the situation they wanted to be in. Dyer's middle tower in that attack. particular instance. Maybe think if they were a little bit safer, but of course that reverse player up on the Magnus makes defenses like that a little bit more difficult, especially when they don't really have a good way of defending against the Magnus ult. They don't have a ton of abilities that are going to stop him from really doing whatever he wants. Telekinesis and Disruption are certainly good and all, but Disruption not going to really do too much except for stall it out for a couple seconds. And of course, Telekinesis doesn't last very long, and they don't have another really follow-up stun. Bear with it. And it looks like we're going to sit around now, everyone trying to farm Fanny, going to find a double damage in the upper river, trying to wait for his bottle to get back so he can get full mana. For going for the double damage. Wants to take complete advantage of it and manage to. Because Ted Kane kind of claw really just can't force him off of it. Warlock, Shadow Demon, like Warlock's a pretty good team fight hero, but neither of these heroes are really gonna be able to do too much when it comes to just a gank on a Magnus. We have Rio wandering around invisible on the tree and protector sitting in that nature's guys. Only really has it level one. Probably only needs it at level one for the what is it? Thirty sec, fifteen second. It is. Middle tower is under attack. Has to stay out near these trees, but he's got that ultimate, the overgrowth, and it might set up a kill up in this top lane here. A team fight. There's the overgrowth gonna land on three. Clinch already taking a lot of damage. Telekinesis is gonna be there on the satyr. Stuns up the enchantress. Reverse player coming out only gonna land on one really. And they were first player stolen by Clinch, doing a lot of damage to Freddy, but they're all still alive. Baron's doing okay. Vic gonna heal up. Kills Clinch. Cataclaw's still alive. They're chasing him back. And here comes Lone Druid trying to get involved as well. Looks like it's gonna be Vic running away on this Enchantress. Rio trying to get out as well. Gonna give himself that living armor trying to survive. Where's the disruption in the back of the fight? Grazine going in here. Gonna get the kill on Cataclaw. But gonna lose his own life for it, it looks like. We have Baron in some trouble as well now. Gonna get earned up. Uses the rage to be able to get away just fine. The Golem's still alive as well as the bear. These summons chasing down Vic doing a lot of damage. And something stolen from Magnus once again. It's gonna be Shockwave. If he gets that off in a chance, it might be his death. Or M. Screw gonna come out from Fanny. Misses on everything. Clinch taking a lot of damage though. Shockwave missing completely from Fanny. 
Might be a huge mistake. The Enchanter Sprites tried to keep him alive for the moment. He's taking a lot of damage. Gonna toss another Shockwave out. Gets killed off by the stolen Shockwave from Rurik, though. The bear goes down. In the meantime, Simpson does have a resummon. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. And uh, not really sure what to say with this fight. Infernity, they're 12 to 3 now in terms of kill. If they lose a kill on Grazine, they probably didn't need to give away. Skirka could come off a fan, should be the death. Cat Claw gonna go down. And they end up sort of on the bounce back after the fight. Respawn, port back up to his top lane, get another kill. As well as they're gonna get this tower completely free. In the meantime, Lone Druid heading to the mid lane. Gonna try and do some damage to that tier 1 mid. Shouldn't even really be able to get close to it. Before, yeah, the tower's already down. If they want to try and defend him, that's what they do though. I think they could just try and push the top lane. You got the living armor from the lone druid already in the mid lane. Try to keep it healed up as well as defend against those creeps pushing into it. Looks like Klitsch gonna find out Vic here. They're trying to pull him up on the cliff, I think. Klitsch gonna take a lot of damage. You need to be careful. And it looks like Vic's still alive. The overgrowth gonna be there. Clinch surviving as well. Rio gonna get slowed up, and it looks like Grazine's gonna finish off that kill, immediately porting out. No fear whatsoever, it looks like Livestore does have that arm lit up. It's actually not the worst time, considering how his early game really went. He has a lot of blast, it's actually leading on that scoreboard right now. Not in terms of net worth though, of course all those kills going the way of Phantom Assassin certainly helping out there. A lot of Radiant Wards getting dropped in this dire jungle. They might be thinking about going for gank on Baron. Bane does have that ultimate. Not gonna head to high ground, they would have been able to catch him out completely there. And in the meantime, Magnus finds a kill in the bottom lane, it looks like. Ah, uh, Lone Druid. Use the reverse player to do that with some help from Grazine. On the Phantom Assassin. Quick, easy kill, though. On the Lone Druid, he's the only hero really doing well. It looks like Rio is going to lose his life. Life still gets that last in the top lane. In the meantime, the supports, they're going to book it out of here. They need to be careful. I'm thinking, getting chased by Baron, but Baron can just give it up. Which is definitely the right call. They have some spells in the form like the War Warlock Golem. But they would have been committing that for uh, basically one, maybe two support kills. And they're losing the tower to the carry in the form of the Phantasis as well as the Magnus in that bottom lane. Which is also not something they want to be doing. Phantasis isn't getting the last hit as well. Looks like she picked up a drums now. This is a really Dyer's aggressive fan of Assassin build. Attack. Very Radiant early game oriented by uh, maybe what I was expecting from Fan Assassin. Let's get her doing quite a bit of damage early. She has a lot of stats with these drums with the aura from the Vlads. And it looks like Rio might be thinking about going for an ult here. Gonna get the overgrowth out a bunch. Disruption gonna come off and Magus do whatever he can for the moment. He's gonna get kinda caught out. Cataclaw. Gonna get killed off. It looks like Baron going down from the ult from Bane. It looks like it's pretty much gonna be everyone 10k, the only one left alive. And Lone Druid in the meantime dies in the bottom lane. Ends up trading with the Phantom Assassin. But in the meantime, the top lane, a 4v4 fight. And it goes completely in Infernity's favor. Even with the kill going first to the PA at the bottom. So she loses her life, but she gets the experience. And keeps Infernity's or Crave's only hero that's really doing. Pretty okay. Kind of out of it. He's under 4,000 net worth. There are three heroes above 5,000. For Infernity. Kind of the buyback from PA actually. Going towards the mid lane immediately. Try to push it out. It looks like the rest of our team is sitting towards that top lane. I'm not sure if they're going to commit to this. Looks like Enchantress went to grab some creeps from the jungle, but they're already going on this tower. Living Armor coming up from Rio, try to heal people up. Fortified. Keep them in the fight for as long as possible. The Fortify going to be used, and I think that's it for that push. In the meantime, Grazine PA, mid lane. Looks to be trying to keep this push going, taking some damage from the tower. Sort of. 
I say that, but like dodging every attack, apparently. And they're keeping pressure in the top lane as well. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. It's just the living armor with the meld makes Phantom Assassin like immune to towers. Okay. I mean, stuff gonna miss on Baron. He's gonna be able to rage immediately out of that defensive disruption. Gets Dyer's away completely unharmed. They've lost about two fifths of their HP on that mid tier two. Paul's gonna come out from Cataclysm. Let's see if he gives an explanation. So I'm not sure what this pause is about. How long we're gonna be waiting here? Hopefully not too long. Sort of inexplicable pause. Yeah, it looks like they're good to go. Alright, back to it. So it looks like Inferti are rotating back towards this top lane want to go on the tier 2 tower still. I mean, some Grazine hanging out in that mid lane. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Continuing to try and keep that pressure up there. It looks like she's just going to rotate towards the bottom now. There is an invis room in the lower river. Not going to choose to pick it up. Guess I'm not super concerned about it. Dyer's top tower is under attack. And are they just backing off? It kind of looks like they are. I think Crave might have been thinking about just giving that tower up. They were standing really far back. Gonna go in now, though. And it looks like Inferti are content to just back off. Slow down a little bit. They know they have a lead. We could look exactly how much. It's over 10k gold, over almost 12k now experience. And not really ready to give too much up. They don't need to overextend. They don't need to throw a lot of big team fights. Both teams do have a pretty powerful team fight. We're going to see Fanny and bottle that Invisrin finally, as well as mana boots being popped. Here comes the ult on Baron, and I don't know if they're going to get this kill. Uh, the infest is going to be there, Fanny taking a lot of damage, the living armor going to keep it alive for a moment. Grazine trying to kill Baron, going to be able to get it. Lifestealer, maybe a little more confident than he should be there in that fight. <laughs> Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Cataclaw looks to be getting wow, overgrowth being committed for that. The disrupt defensive disruptor could keep him alive for seconds a lot more than he would normally. The top tier two of the bottom lane does go down. And GG gonna get called. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. That was kind of so, Inferni gonna take it. Uh, kind of unconventional in their play. It was very aggressive, but it really attack. punished, I guess, how the Crave were playing. They tried to run that aggressive trial lane, figured, yeah, Phantom Assassin, Bane, basically two and a half lane with the Enchantress in the jungle. Let's try and punish it. Let's try and commit a lot to it and deal all that damage that we can. And they're gonna be able to just take it. Crave not able to get work done, gave a lot of kills up. We see Famous Essen able to just build whatever she really wanted. And we'll get going. Just gonna wait for Dyer's Clinch to disconnect here. We'll get that attack. scoreboard. And we'll move on and see where we're going for this next game. 
Or maybe we'll wait and see if Infernity all want to disconnect. Who knows? Dyer's top tower has fallen. No, Dyer's maybe. Tower is under attack. Just gonna sit in the game. There we go. Beautiful. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Dyer's middle tower has fallen. Okay, once again, this is a match of the TT Esports Weekly Dota 2 Tournament number Dyer's 11. Is under attack. Powered by Adroids and of course brought to you by me. Can I ask your caster for today? Um, we have social media for both Adroids, TT Esports, and myself, all available. If you guys want to follow me, you can f check me out at twitch.tv slash Kanazta, K-A-N-A-Z-T-A, or at my Twitter, at Kanazdota, K-A-N-A-Z-D-O-T-A. -A. And there's, of course, the stuff available for both Adroids. And thermal take as well if you want to find those. They're up on those in-between game screens. We'll be back momentarily while we wait for that next game to get going. Thanks for coming and feel free to stick around.